Amen. We record that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Once again, welcome everybody. Welcome uh, those of you who are here and those who join us through Facebook Live. Uh, we pray that the word will bless you this morning. So after I was touching on the, uh, the importance of giving, you know, positioning ourselves to be blessed, uh, the assurance of waiting on the Lord last week, uh, today I sort of move on to a little uh, pastoral sermon uh, today. Uh, we want to read Hebrews chapter 12. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, 2, 3. Yeah. Just three verses this morning. You can read the whole chapter actually. And you can read also Hebrews 11, all right, to understand this context. But Hebrews chapter 12, you can read the whole chapter. Uh, but we will uh, look at today about looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, all right? So I know this is not a, a very new scripture to us. It's quite familiar scripture, looking unto Jesus, all right? He's the author and the finisher of our faith. But because um, why I want to speak about this today, because we have some of them who just got baptized the other day. And also, um, some of us, we might be going through some situation in our life. And just want to encourage you, it's important to look unto Jesus. I want to explain this word, looking unto Jesus today in these three verses. All right, uh, a lot of things to talk about. If you want to uh, look at the whole chapter, there are so many things. Actually, in this uh, sermon today, I was wondering whether I can finish this or not. <laughs> because it's quite a lot to talk about. All right, I'm a I'm a pastor who don't preach only by reading my notes. I I preach. Um, I I try to have uh, freedom to preach whatever the Lord put into my heart while I am uh, speaking, and you know I try to uh, bring that out to us. If I read the notes, of course, it's very fast. All right, even though I have twelve pages here, but um, we will see what how the Lord will lead us. Because sometimes God will speak to us, even though we have the notes here, but sometimes God will put something in your heart, in your spirit, to bring out to the people. Because I don't know what kind of situation you are in, right? We do not know, sometimes the preacher do not know what the person is going through in his life or her life. But this is what we want to see today. Looking unto Jesus, Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 3. Let's read verse 1. Wherefore, I'm reading from the King James, right? I'm a King James per person. Um, there's a lot of arguments about Bible translation, but it's okay. Whatever you prefer, um, it, it's good to go back to the original uh, language or translation so that we can come close to the uh, meaning. But anyway, let's read verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which that so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for consider him that endured such contradiction uh, of sinners against himself lest you be wearied and faith a uh, faint in your mind uh, very beautiful and powerful word right so the Christian life, it says here, it's a race. You know, actually this year our theme is walking with God. We walk with God. Walking with God means, you know, you're not only a believer who believes God. Oh, I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sunday. All right. But for the rest of the week, I just live myself, my own life and all of that. But we need to walk with God because we serve a living God. He is with us. Jesus said, I am with you until the end of the world. He walked with us. And on top of that, he gave us the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. The paraclete or parakletos who, he, who is beside us, who, who walk with us side by side. You know, we have, you know, the people in the world, they, 
they want to have something you know supernatural or extraordinary sometimes they need a guy that's why people go to the medium they go to the bomo they go to the spiritists in all of this you know the psychic and everything they are called uh, the the all this black magic and all because they want something supernatural they want something to guide them to protect them they want to have a sense of power they have to ha they want to have a sense of you know authority or to give them confidence because if I have these things, I have more uh, confidence and boldness to live my life. But you know, God has given us this. His presence to go with us. His Holy Spirit to walk with us, to be with us, to empower us. He is the one who guides us. This, this God that we believe. Hallelujah. Last Friday we talked about the, the deity of Christ. And if you were here last Friday, you, you begin to understand the, the deity of Christ or the divinity of Christ. All the essential attributes of God, we can find it in Christ. That's why we believe that He is God, God the Son, the second person in the Trinity. Because all the essential attributes of God the Father, we can find it in Jesus. He is omnipresence, means he is everywhere. Jesus is everywhere. Jesus fill this world with his presence. He is here today with us. He will be there with you outside from today, Monday, Tuesday to the next Sunday. Whatever you do, wherever you go, he is with you because he is omnipresence. That is Jesus. The Jesus that we believe, the Jesus that we worship, the Jesus that saves us, redeem us, the Jesus who forgave our sins, who died for us, who rose from the dead for us. He is omnipresent. Can we not have confidence? Can we not have this assurance in this life? Since we know that He is omnipresent, He is with us, He is walking with us every day. Hallelujah. He is omniscient. Means He knows everything. Alright? So, means you cannot run away from God because he, he knows everything. He knows your name. He knows who you are. He knows your address. He knows what you are thinking. He knows your intention. He knows what is in your heart. He knows what you are planning. He knows how you are living. He knows your thoughts. And I'm, so that's why it is better to be humble before God and just be honest with God and say, say, God, I am in a mess. <laughs> God, I cannot run away from you. I have weaknesses. I do fall. I do come short of your glory. I cannot run. God, I cannot run. That is why we need His grace in our life. Because we cannot live our life by our own self. He is omniscient. Meaning He is all-knowing. Jesus knew what was in men, the Bible says. When Jesus saw Andrew, He said, I know you. You were sitting under that Jupiter tree. You know, you are an Israelite that is without guile. Uh, Andrew said, how do you know me? He said, before you see me, I saw you sitting. Jesus knows everything. He knows. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. Means all powerful. He is the mighty God. He is omni. You know, when we know this characteristic of God, all these attributes of God, it just makes you to have confidence and faith in Him, knowing who is God to you. He is omnipotent. He is immutable, means unchanging, unchangeable. God cannot change. That's why, you know, I can believe His promise. I can believe what he say in his word because he is unchanging. He said in Malachi, he said, I am the Lord and I do not change. That's why you are not consumed, O Jacob. Because 
I am immutable, God said, because I cannot change. That's why you are not destroyed, even though Jerusalem is destroyed. Even though Jerusalem was taken into captivity, they were taken to Babylon, you know. But God said, you are not destroyed, a remnant shall return. In fact, God promised them that a remnant of them will come back to their land and rebuild the city. Because he is a faithful God. He cannot change. He is unchangeable. His promises, his covenant with Israel cannot be changed. That's why God said, you are not consumed. Knowing this will make us to really love him and trust him. Because he is our God. He is immutable. Unchanging. People change. Even good friends change. Right? Human beings change. They can make a lot of promises, but they will change. I believe all of us experience that. We are disappointed because people whom we trust, they change. But you know, God will never change. Jesus will never change. That's why you can believe his word. Whatever he promised here, you believe. That's the only difference in the Christian life. Some Christians, they experience the power of the word of God. Why? Because they believe it. Some Christians, they read the Bible, they memorize it, they know everything in the word, but they do not experience the power of the word of God in their life. Why? Because they don't believe it. They just read it, but they don't believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants you to believe his word. Exercise your faith. Develop your faith. Stretch your faith to believe what he promised. Why? Because he is unchangeable. He is immutable. God does not change. The, 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 the Christian walk, he says here, is a race. And we need to do it by looking unto Jesus. The Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you. That is the Christian life. Colossians 1.27. That is the essence of the Christian life. Christ in you which is the hope of glory. Christianity is being confirmed into the image of the Son of God. That is Jesus Christ. That is us. That's why we run this race. Our goal is to be confirmed to the image of God's Son. Jesus Christ. That's why we, we continue to walk in this Christian walk. Don't be satisfied to be a church goer. We need to live our life, the Christian life. And um, you know, to really pursue Christ in our life. Until we are changed, we are confirmed into his image. That is the Christian life. Nobody has arrived. Nobody has arrived, but we need to continue in this journey. So in this journey, you will experience a lot of things. There's a lot of distraction, a lot of temptation, a lot of trials, a lot of problems and all. But all these are designed so that you will be conformed into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. We need all this. We need all of these things to be conformed into the image of Christ Jesus. Paul says like this. He said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That is the goal of Paul the Apostle's life. To me to live is Christ. That's all. You know, like many people today, to me to live is football. You know, makan bola, tidur bola, minum bola, everything is bola. Well, for that is for Malaysia lah. All right. But in the Philippines, maybe different. Huh? Boxing lah. Uh, wake up boxing, working boxing, or basketball. You know? So what is the thing that drives you? What is your passion in life? We need to turn that passion into Christ. Christ Jesus is my passion. He is my goal. Like Paul the Apostle, he said, to me to live is Christ. He was the most educated person in his day. Paul the Apostle. He was very educated. He is very well respected among the Jews, even the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin. Paul was very respected. Even, um, actually, he was you know, expected to replace the most famous teacher during that time, Gamaliel. You know, Gamaliel was planning to, you know, to raise Paul under him, to replace him. 
but he changed when he met Jesus. So Jesus became the goal of his life. He threw everything. You know, he said, I count all things but dung, or I count all things but rubbish, so that I can have the excellency of Christ, to know him. So we need to, to turn our passion into Christ Jesus. I'm not saying, you know, just to be a religious person, you know, to be holy, holy. No, it's a life. Jesus. I think uh, 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 something that you can invest your life in because at the end of the day, we will be facing him. At the end of the day, we will stand before him. Say amen. A lot of things we cannot, you know, we'll talk about this, to throw away, to get rid of all of this thing. Why? Because to believe, to follow Jesus, to know Jesus, it's a challenge. God is challenging you. God is not only inviting you in him, but he's challenging you. God said, if you follow me, if you want to come in to me, then there's a lot of things you need to get rid of. God said, if you want to follow me and to come into me, this thing cannot come. That thing cannot come. All of this thing cannot come. It's a challenge. So do you want to accept the challenge of God? All right. If you want to follow Jesus in your life. You know, to, to really follow Jesus, there's a lot of things that we cannot do. But there is a lot of things that you will receive and benefit in your Christian life. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. To me, to live is Christ. Philippians 1.21 For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Galatians 2.20 He said, Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God. It's no more me. He said, I live, but I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I do live, I do work, I do all of this thing. But Paul says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. That is Christianity. That is Christianity. In verse 1, he said, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. In verse 1. Let's read again verse 1. He said, wherefore. Now, why he said wherefore? Because in chapter 11, he listed all these men of faith, or we call that the heroes of faith. You know? In the world, we have the hall of fame. But in Hebrews 11, we have the hall of faith. All those people who live for God, like Abraham, Jacob, Moses, you know, Daniel, all these, Jephthah, Samson, all these great men of faith who was tested in their life following God. God gave them the promise, but they keep the promise. So because they keep the promise of God, so they live their life living for God. They face a lot of situations. They experience a lot of things. Their faith in God was tested, but they have arrived. They are there. That's why now they are like a cloud of witnesses for us. These are the people in Hebrews 11. These are the people who has gone before us. Because we are people of faith who believe in Christ. They set an example for us. They set a model for us. As if that they are looking at us and they are telling us, Hey, we have arrived here. You must be strong. <coughs> you must be courageous. You must be patient. You need to tahan <laughs> in your life, even how hard it is. If we have arrived here in the old covenant under the law, under the old covenant, you can do better because you are, you are under the new covenant. We arrive here because Joshua has led us into the promised land. You can do better because your Jesus is leading you into your promised land. They have gone before us. They are there. They become like, it's a metaphor. You know, they become a cloud of witnesses. Like the people who are, who, who are uh, those in the Olympic. You know, in those stadium, people will be surrounding them and they do their games and all. And people are cheering them. 
So we have these saints, we have these old covenant people who has gone before us. They are there. And they are saying you need to keep on living, keep on walking with God. Be patient, be strong. You can make it. You can do it. Say amen. Oh, some people because they don't read the Bible, they don't see. So when they face situation in their life, they feel like nobody care. But actually there are so many of them cheering us. We can take them as an example. Like Job. Like the three friends of Daniel. They have gone through so many things in life. But now they are there. We can do it. But we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Say amen. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed or surrounded about. By uh, with so great a cloud of witnesses. A cloud of witnesses. He said a cloud of witnesses. Now. One thing very interesting of this cloud of witnesses, just to, you know, to understand this. This cloud of witnesses actually, as I mentioned, these are the old covenant saint who has gone before us. They, are, they have arrived there. But the difference is, this cloud of witnesses, actually, they are, they are not the one who is looking at us and cheering us. Actually, we are the one who is looking at them and take courage of what they have experienced. He said here, run the race. The runner, actually, who? It's us who believe in Christ, who start to journey in this life, walking with Jesus in this life. We are the runners. So we run. We continue to run. And then this running is not a sprint. Or a hundred meter sprint. But it's a marathon. Because life is a marathon. You can run fast. You can run slow. But it's a marathon. And he said this, this race is set before us. It's not you who choose your race. It is God who set the race for you. When you believe in him. He is the one who set the race for you. You just run. So you run in all of this life until you reach the end. So we run. So this cloud of witnesses, instead of us thinking that they are looking at us, you know, because the Bible did not mention it, we, we need to, to, to find it. Where does the Bible mention that these people in heaven, they have a conscious, they are conscious about us. It did not say. But this serve as an example, as an encouragement. It's not them who is looking at us, but we are the one who is looking at them and learn from them and be encouraged about their life and their faith. Be encouraged. So we are the one who need to be conscious that there are people who has gone before us. You know, maybe they, they have gone before us for hundreds of years or thousands of years but you know in eternity actually there is no distance and eternity there is no distance one proof of that is the angel Gabriel angel Gabriel he appeared to Daniel many many hundred years before All right. but then after many hundred years Gabriel, the angel, appeared to Joseph again. And it's the same. He never grow old. The same Gabriel. All right? In eternity, there is no distance. In eternity, there is no aging. In eternity. So in eternity, almost like there is no difference in eternity. Only us who age here in this world. But what is... 50 years to God. What is 60 years to God? What is 70 years, 80 years, or 90 years to God? It's nothing. To God, it is short. In fact, it's very short because to God, one day is a thousand years. And you cannot live a thousand years, not even 10%. <laughs> you know, people cannot live up to 100 years today. Only few, very few. You know, very few live 90 years old. Very few now live. 
uh, seven, uh, eight years old. All right? But many people nowadays, many people nowadays die in their 50s and 60s. Even many people today dying in their 30s. Many young people today died in their 30s. And people try to talk about that because there's so many. You know, we do, before technology, before all this technology and all, we, we accept that we don't know or we think that people who have died every day is very few. Very few. Because no technology like what we have today. But today we have technology. You just type in Google, how many people die every day? And you say, wow, so much. Uh, every day so much people die. But before we never thought about it because like there's no technology that can tell us. Actually, every second, somebody died. So it means every minute, 60 people died or more. Just Think about in one hour, how many people die? Or 24 hours, how many people die every day? But before, we don't talk about it. And so many people today, because we can hear, you know, even myself, wow, from my kampung alone in Sabah, my kampung alone, you know, because they post the <laughs> wake services, the death, all these, huh? Wow, in my kampung alone, like every month, sometimes in one month, few people die in one month. I say, wait, what's happening to the kampung? Is there a curse in that kampung? No, it's just um, the, the, the updates. We can rece receive updates today, just like that. But before, we don't have. So we think like everybody is healthy, nobody die, all right? But actually, there is. Almost every second, almost every second, there are people who died. But e almost every second also there are people who are born. Right? And because we can see and almost we can feel death every day, people blame the vaccine. People blame the vaccine. I don't know where they get that. But now media can tell us there are a lot of people dying every day. So many people die every day. Right. Here, the Bible says, we need to look at them. It's not them who cheering us, because you will never see them. You don't hear them. We can read about them in the Bible. We can read the example. We can read their patient. We can read their courage. But we cannot see them. We cannot hear them. We are the one who are conscious of our life. We are the one who is journeying. We are the one who is living. We are the one who need to understand that there are people who have arrived there. We can take example from them. So whatever problem you go through, even how hard life is, some people, they want to give up their life. They want to hang themselves. They jump from the building. They drink poison and all. Sometimes it's just a small problem, but because of this, you know, really... Their minds succumb to it, so they take their life. You don't have to do it. Why? Because there is a life that God promised you. You can live your life to the full if you understand what God's plan for you. We need to take courage. Problem is normal for a Christian. Say amen. And we are victorious people. We are more than conqueror. We have more than anything that we we need in our life we have jesus we have the holy spirit we have his word we have his power we have his presence we have everything that god provided for us and we can live this life to the fullest say amen so we have this cloud of witnesses witnesses right so because we have this cloud of witnesses so the writer of the Hebrew encourages us or counsel us or give us advice. Number one, he said, because we have this cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. And let us run so on and so forth and all that. But let me take this one first. Let us aside, lay aside every weight, lay aside every way why because we have this cloud of witnesses we have this example there is a place that they have arrived they are in the presence of god they have arrived there 
so because of that let us lay aside every weight the word weight here is translated ogkon or mass or weight or burden or impediment or an obstacle that is the word weight burden obstacle so he said let us lay aside every weight you know this is a picture of the athletes when they do training you know when people are training when the athletes are training in their training they put weight on sometimes they pull a big uh, tires there big wheel you know or they lift up dumbbells and all you know or they put metals in their legs in their training so in training they put on weights to increase their strength and all of that their speed and everything so they put weight for the for the swimmers they swim you know uh, in the water and all uh, to to you know to to put weight in their swimming so that it increase their speed but in the actual game they have to lay aside they have, they have to put off all the weights that's why nowadays you know compared to 50 years before or 30 years before when you see athletes they are in their full yeah full full attire or full <laughs> uniform but as the years goes on less and less we see last time the ladies also still can wear like a short what do you call that a short uh, skirt and all you know flowery skirt and all but today like they almost don't wear anything all right even their their track suit you know become thinner and thinner you know why because they want to put off the weight that hinders them that slow them down from running right. that is the reason that's the reason it's not fashion it's just the reason for them because they want to win they want to be as light as they can so that they can perform the best performance that, that they can give so but the Bible says this weight, this burden, this obstacle, this impediment, we need to put off. That's why Christianity is a challenge. To be a follower of Christ is a challenge. Jesus said, come and follow me. There's a simple word. But when you take that seriously, it costs something in your life. Hallelujah. I won't be like this today. If I don't take the challenge to follow Jesus, especially to go into the ministry, I will not be like this today if I say, oh, I still can keep some of these things. You know, God, I follow you, but I want to bring all this baggage. I want to bring all these things. You know, I like all this. You know, I treasure them. You know, but cannot. You have to leave it up. You have to get rid of this. This is the way. We have not talked about the sin because the Hebrew writer said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. We'll talk about that next week maybe because my time is not, not enough. That's why I said, I'm wondering, how can I finish this sermon today? Lay aside every weight. You can meditate on this. You can think about this. What are the things that hinders you? What are the things that impedes your walk with Jesus? What are the things that impedes or obstacles that hinders you from growing in God? There are things that we need to get rid so that we will grow in God. What are the things that hinders you from praying more? What are the things that hinders you from reading the Bible more? What are the things that hinders you from coming to church every Sunday? What are the things that hinders you from walking with God every day? From being free to serve God? What are the things that hinders you? 
A lot of things. Not only, listen to this. Not only bad things or evil things. Sometimes innocent things or even so-called good things can hinder you from growing in Christ. Do you hear that? That's very important. You know, a lot of people think only bad things hinders you from growing in Christ. Only evil things or sinful uh, habits, sinful things that people do hinder them from grow, growing in Christ. Sometimes some good things, some innocent things hinders people from growing in Christ. Church, let us consider this challenge consider this challenge. But of course not many people like this sermon. They like to go to places where the sermon is good you know, like tickle them you know, people be laughing you can see them. But here when I preach everybody is silent not because they don't like the sermon but because they are in deep meditation, try to swallow that Ugh. <laughs> But we think about it To run the race. Even if you read Hebrews chapter 12, he said, don't let any bitterness come into your heart which defile. He said, if you want to walk with God, you need to live in holiness because without holiness, no one can see the Lord. All this in chapter 12. He said, you know, lift up those hands that hangs down, strengthen the knees that is feeble. Do not forsake the assembling of together. All of this here in Hebrew is a challenge. Some, they just don't think it seriously. What are the things that hinders you? What are the weights that you need to lay aside? The word lay aside here is apotemino. You know, sometimes all these Greek words you don't even memorize them or remember them, but it's good to mention it. Apotemenoi means read oneself. You have to read it, you know, take it out. You know, because the word sin which so easily beset us, that word beset is another Greek word, means easily cling, cling to you. Something that clings to you so easily, the sin, if you're not careful. So you, when the sin clings to you, you need to get rid of them. You know, you have to really read it off from yourself. Putting off from oneself. Suggest something thrown off like a garment. You know, you are wearing this garment or your garment is being soiled, being defiled. You take it out quickly and then throw it away. That is the word lay aside. So it means you need to take action immediately. Immediately, take action immediately, throw it off and put on the garments of Christ, garments of righteousness, garments of godliness in our life. So let us lay aside every weight. Why? Because we have a cloud of witnesses that can be our example, our courage that can give us encouragement to walk in this life. It's not easy to walk in this life. Amen? It's not easy. Sometimes we are happy, but we cannot deny that this life will give us a lot of challenges. And there are time challenges is quite strong that it can discourage us. Because that is what the devil wants to do. He wants to discourage you. He wants you to feel hopeless. He wants you to feel like, like nobody cares about you. The devil wants you to feel like God doesn't care about you. But just remember, we have all this witnesses like a cloud gathering around us and we can read about them be encouraged hey job you are tested but you go through like abraham moses tested in all of this daniel and his friends were tested all the judges were tested but they they went through all right this is the example of the old testament saint that is just part one. Actually, the part two is Jesus, our example, the greatest example that we have. But we will come into that uh, next time when we are here. So I just want to encourage you this morning. 
that we have a cloud of witnesses that is gathering around us, serve as an example and courage to us. And because of that, number one, we need to lay aside every weight. We have not talked about the sin, but next week we talk about that. Lay aside every weight. So you think about this. Think about this. What are the things that hinders? What are the things that becomes a burden? What are the things that hinders you? Sometimes all this disappointment and hurts. Some people, they don't like it. You know, they, they are not comfortable with it. They know they don't have to, you know, keep this, but assume that they don't want to let it go. Let it go. Amen. If not, I will put the song Frozen to you. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. All the hurts. We went to the Orang Asli last week. The, the, the old man there, quite sickly. The wife died about nine years ago. But then I was there first time. He said, Perempuan saya sudah tiada. So the daughter said, Pastor, pray for him lah. He's still a thing about his wife. So pray for him lah. Let it go lah. Bapa, let it go. Just let it go. You will meet him one day, okay? Let it go. Because if you don't let go, you will not move. You still be there. All the problem, all the hurts, all the bitterness, disappointment that happens 30 years ago, 50 years ago. If you don't let it go, you'll stick up, still talk about it like it happened yesterday. And you will never move. You will never move. You might remember them. I told you, right? Some people saying, the saying goes like this. He said, forgive and forget. I said, it's not true. That is not true. You can throw it away. You can forgive, but you cannot forget. When you have a wound, you know, last time I, I, was, I tried to trap, trap a monkey because I want to catch a monkey behind my house. So I put a trap there. So a big monkey came into the cage. So I tried to catch the monkey, but then uh, he went out. So the, the cage, the, uh, the wood that has a nail fell into my hand. So I have a cut here. This is about 30 years ago. Uh, I still have the scar here. It reminds me. So when I look at this, I remember the big monkey. But it doesn't hurt anymore because it's just a scar. So if you forgive people, it will leave a scar in your life. But Jesus healed the wounds. You can remember all the incidents and everything, but it will never hurt you. Because you have released them, forgiven them. Let it go. Let it go. So sometimes this becomes the weight, the burden. That impedes your growth, your progress in Christ. Come on. We don't have time to waste for all this thing. It's time to walk with Jesus. To run the race so that you will know him. You will grow in him. You will learn more about him. Say amen. You will love him. You, you know, pray for his visitation. Pray for his touch. Pray for his power. Pray for his anointing and all of this thing. All this blessing is for you and for me. Don't let anything weigh us down. But let us run for Jesus. Say amen. Let's all stand and we pray. Thank you Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to encourage us today as a church as we close in prayer. Even those who join us through Facebook live. Encourage you to let go. Let God, let God heal you. Let God restore you. Let all the disappointment, the hurts, all the bad experiences in your life. If somebody take advantage of you, somebody hurts you, let it go. Forgive them. There's no point for you to keep that. Let it go. Let God heal those wounds so that you will grow in Christ. So that you can run this race. Like what the Bible says today, lay aside every weight that hinders you. Lay aside. Oh, we can talk about it. I can talk about so many things and so many people who have disappointed me and hurt me. I can talk about them. But there's no point. I don't want to waste my time. Some people, sometimes we gather with them. There's... They don't, they don't talk anything, but they talk about all those things that happened to them and those things that hurt them. Sometimes if they don't stop talking, I will stop seeing them. God, I don't want to be defiled. And you need to do the same. Amen? All right? Let's move on with Jesus. Let us grow. Let us know Him personally. Paul says, for to me, to live is Christ. 
to live is Christ. He said, I count all things but rubbish that I may know him and the excellency of his power, his sufferings that I may be conformed unto his death so that I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Jesus is so good. Jesus is so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray that you will touch all of us. We are here in church not only because we fulfill our obligation to come on Sunday worship, but to hear your word, to hear you speak, and to receive your ministry, ministering in our hearts, healing us, restoring us, transforming us, blessing us. Lord, today we want to let go, we release, we lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. We want to live for Jesus. We want to run this race until we arrive in you. Thank you. Thank you for the healing that is happening right now. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is moving among your people, even those who are watching us online. Thank you for the healing, restoration. Heal every heart. Heal every disappointment. Heal every discouragement. All the hurts. Lord, heal them in Jesus' name. Heal, 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 heal. In the name of Jesus. Heal, I pray. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for all this. And we give you praise, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your word, your precious word. Thank you for speaking to us today. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you so much for you are so real to us. Bless you, Lord, and give us a great week ahead. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated for a while for the offering.